Reports from Lebanon tonight speak of Israeli airstrikes and landings by helicopter in the Bekaa Valley, way north of the conflict zone on the border and indeed north of Beirut. The area is a stronghold of Hezbollah. The sudden stepping up of the Israeli offensive follows a government decision to send large-scale ground forces into Lebanon. Our diplomatic editor, Mark Urban, is with us. What do we know about uh, the operation in the Bekaa Valley tonight? Well, we've had fragmentary reports in the past hour and a half, starting with Lebanese security officials saying that Israeli helicopters were landing troops near Baalbek, which is the principal town of that Bekaa region. Uh, as you say, quite a long way from the Israeli border. Uh, then there were reports of uh, a lot of air support activity going on. Uh, the Israeli military is not uh, confirming or denying these reports, but of course if you had a sensitive uh, operation going on that far into Lebanese territory, you would wish to refrain from comment until it was over. It would appear, and of course we'll only be able to say in the morning, but it would appear that this is some kind of special operation, and inevitably it's in the nature of these things that they are high risk enterprises. Uh, potentially the gains could be great for the Israelis. Equally, if it goes wrong, it could be extremely worrying and uh, embarrassing for them and a boost to Hezbollah. And it's a real centre for Hezbollah, this, isn't it? It is indeed. I mean, this, this has always been their sanctuary area. It had the advantage of being quite far from the border, an area with strong support, although there are lots of Christian uh, villages in that part of the Bekaa Valley as well, and also very close to Syria from the point of view of liaison with uh, in former times Syrian intelligence there. In any case, if these uh, reports are proven accurate, it's a significant escalation. It may indicate the Israeli military are trying to go all out to hit some things, targets of opportunity, uh, before a ceasefire of some sort is forced upon them. And it does come at a time when in their own country, in Israel, there's been growing criticism of the government's military strategy. Three weeks on, and Israel's forces find themselves fighting an exhausting battle. The aims and methods of this campaign against Hezbollah have changed by the week. And now it's the turn of substantial ground forces to push into Lebanon. It's slow going, but the troops still speak confidently about their mission. It's not a war that Israel chose to be a part of. It's a war that Israel was uh, thrown into by the Hezbollah. Uh, all the soldiers have uh, high, is highly motivated. The new phase involves advances by three different Israeli brigades. The western one, close to the coast, was fighting north of Zarit today. In the centre, another brigade is heading for Bin Jabal. Over to the east, a third has launched itself from what's called the Galilee Panhandle towards Tiber and Shiba. Two additional brigades are now forming up on the border itself, bringing the total force to around 20,000 men. It's an impressive sized group, but so far advances of only a few kilometres have been reported, and except in the east, the Israelis are far short of the Litani river line talked about by their ministers. The Israeli army has advanced over this ground twice before, in 1978 and 1982, making more rapid progress then. What then is their aim now? We need to clean the whole area in South Lebanon from the capability of Hezbollah to launch rockets against Israel. My division did it 20 years ago in three hours. It will take more than that because it's now it's different. But at the end, we must push the Hezbollah behind the litany. In war, of course, original plans often fall by the wayside. But in this offensive against Hezbollah, there have been three quite different stages. In the first, Lebanese infrastructure was hit, apparently with the idea that this might compel the government there to suppress Hezbollah. When that didn't work, limited ground operations were started, but it was emphasised by Israel these would be short-term. After setbacks, the Israelis called up more armoured brigades and began today with the third phase, large-scale incursions. Israel's general staff had been preparing plans long before their soldiers were abducted. When reporting 18 months ago on Hezbollah backing for Palestinian suicide bombers, I heard this threat. Sooner or later we'll have to do something about it. And when, when, we'll, have to, when we'll have to act against terrorist activity that comes 
from the northern border, not only along the border, but from the northern arena, we will not necessarily have to deal with Hezbollah itself as an organization, but we'll have to take care of the two hosting countries, which are uh, Lebanon and Syria. And in the months that followed, there were leaks about bombing Lebanon back 20 years and restoring the deterrent power of Israeli forces. It was these ideas, embodied by the chief of staff, an air force man, that seemed to have informed Israel's initial reliance on air power and its targeting of Beirut airport, power stations and flyovers. If the idea that this was meant to coerce Lebanon into clamping down on Hezbollah seemed far-fetched, the targeting of these early raids seemed to copy NATO's bombing of the Serbs. NATO carried on its offensive for 79 days, whereas Israel's strategy was changing in less than one week. Ground in South Lebanon is, is quite complex. It's, uh, it, it's got a lot of mountains, uh, very steep wadis, interconnecting gullies, and lots and lots of small but densely populated villages. And Hezbollah have had six years to dig in and infiltrate that area. They're even using underground complexes, tunnels, similar to those used by the Viet Cong and Vietnam uh, against the Americans. So the Israelis were never going to neutralise the threat from Hezbollah from the air, i.e. using air power. This, from the get-go, was going to have to be a ground operation involving infantry units saturating the terrain. The change appears to have been prompted by Hezbollah rocketing of Haifa that killed eight railway workers. Further setbacks... The deaths of nine soldiers in a Hezbollah ambush in Binch Bale and killing of more than 50 Lebanese civilians in Kana on Sunday prompted yesterday's Israeli cabinet announcement of large-scale ground operations. It is a war that has no goals. The goals keep changing. They contradict itself, every, the, the, themselves. Everything um, is uh, improvisation and um, nobody knows what's going on. Israel's Prime Minister has linked the push north to moves to negotiate an end to the conflict. We are at the start of a diplomatic process that I believe will lead in the end to a ceasefire under totally different conditions from those which existed previously on our northern border. The presence of a force that will serve as a buffer between us and those who wish to destroy us. As for the aims of this campaign, Israeli ministers have taken different lines. The Prime Minister has talked about freeing his two abducted soldiers and stopping Hezbollah rockets. But his colleagues have talked about smashing the Shiite guerrilla organisation, gaining full implementation of UN resolutions to disarm it, and even thwarting Iranian influence in the region. The government's critics are now arguing that its ability to gain some sort of victory has actually declined as the conflict has gone on. Fact is that the Israeli high command doesn't seem to have had a very well-defined concept of how the war must end. And that, of course, is essential to any successful uh, strategy. Um, at the moment, it's looking horribly, from the Israeli point of view, as if the war will end with Israel in a worse strategic position than she began with. The fighting rages tonight, with three more Israeli soldiers killed in one sector and five more wounded on the frontier itself. The country's politicians know that international pressure for a ceasefire is building, but their forces have yet to achieve the objectives set out by their Prime Minister.